Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Chemical Engineering Knowledge. In this lecture we will discuss about the experimental determination of gas phase diffusion coefficient. So how can we determine the gas phase diffusion coefficient? This DAB. In the previous lecture we have discussed about the DAB for the gases, mixture for uh, liquid, mixture for dilute liquids. We have determined this DAB in the previous lectures. In this lecture we will discuss that how can we determine the divisibility of uh, component A in the component B, mean DAB. How can we determine the divisibility of component A in the component B with the help of experiment. So, diffusion, there are various methods to determine the gas phase diffusion coefficient, but the two important methods are thin bulk method and the use of Stepan tube. So, two thin bulk method and the use of Stepan tube. In this lecture, we will discuss the thin bulk method to determine the gas phase diffusion coefficient, this DAB. So, what is this method? In this method, in this method, we first of all we will select two tubes. Select two tubes. R2 bulb number 1 and B1 and B2 bulb number 1 and bulb number 2. So two bulbs, bulb 1 and bulb number 2 of the same size. So the size of bulb number 1 will be equal to the size of bulb number 2. That means that the volume of bulb 1 will be equal to volume of bulb 2. Then connect the two bulbs with the help of a narrow tube with well. So, first of all select two bulbs of the same volume, then connect the two bulbs with the help of a narrow tube. Then uh, mix the components in the bulb with mixture to obtain a uniform composition in both the bulbs B1 and B2. So, uh, first of all we select two bulbs B1 and B2, then connect the two bulbs by a narrow tube like this tube with a well in that uh, narrow tube. Then we uh, mix the uh, component of the bulb. These component can be gases or some liquids. So in this case we are mixing gases in the two bulbs to obtain a uniform composition in both the bulbs. Then, then Initially the well is closed. Initially the well was closed. Initially the well connecting the bulb is closed. So the well which we uh, connected in the narrow tube initially it was closed. Then evacuate the bulbs. So then we remove air or some other component from the bulbs to uh, obtain empty spaces in the both bulbs. Then fill the bulb number one with flower gas A, which is component A, which is component A, then fill the bulb number 2 with flower gas B. Then the arrangement should be kept at constant temperature. So these two bulbs should be at constant temperature T and at constant pressure. So then connect the, then the arrangement should then keep the arrangement at constant or temperature T. Then fill then fill both the bulbs fill both the bulbs uh, fill both the bulbs A and B with same pressure. So initially we evacuated both the bulbs then we fill bulb number 1 with power gas A then we fill the uh, uh, bulb number 2 with power gas B uh, and uh, then uh, finally we uh, fill both of the bulb with same pressure which is P. So the system is at constant pressure and at constant temperature. Now open the well. After filling both the bulb to pressure P, then open the well, then allow diffusion to occur in the connecting narrow tube. So open the well to allow diffusion of component in the narrow tube. So when we open the bulb, the well, 
the two component will transfer uh, will transfer uh, into the uh, into the uh, bulbs so component a will transfer from bulb number a to bulb number uh, b and component b will transfer from bulb number b to bulb number a after certain time close the well so after certain time when component a is transferred to uh, 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 bulb 2 and component 2 transfer to bulb a then after certain time close the well close the well now take samples from take samples from bulb 1 and measure its concentration with the help of concentration measuring instrument like uh, concentration measuring instrument like uh, uh, by the help of uh, uh, light or by the help of electricity we can measure the concentration so then then similarly take sample from bulb number 2 and measure its concentration with the help of concentration measuring instrument so then is pressure and temperature of the system is constant and assumed and assumed so we assume that the pressure pressure and temperature of the system was constant the p was pressure and t was the temperature of the system now assume equimolar assume equimolar counter diffusion so we assume equimolar counter diffusion in the connecting tube so we assume that equimolar counter diffusion is occurring in the connecting tube then the bulb or is the bulb or large in size and the partial and the partial pressure of the gases in the bulb changes very very slowly because is volume of the connecting bulb of the bulb are very large so the pressure will be changes very small so pa is equal to na or pa divided by va similarly pb will be equal to nb mole of b universal gas constant temperature of b and volume of b so ta tb and ta are constant so we will write t simply t constant temperature t so this was uh, partial pressure of component a and this is the partial pressure of component b in the in the bulbs so now assume steady state diffusion in the connecting tube so we assume that there is a uh, steady state diffusion in the connecting tube so uh, let's consider first of all we uh, take two bulb bulb number one this yellow is bulb number one and this one is the bulb number 2 b1 is bulb number 1 and b2 is bulb number 2 the volume of bulb number 1 is v1 so v1 is the volume of bulb number 1 and the component uh, of gas or the component of uh, the, the gas which is present in bulb number 1 is a so component a is present in uh, the left side bulb which is uh, the volume of this bulb is v1 the volume of this bulb is v2 so the component which is present in bulb number one is V is A. Similarly, the pressure of component uh, A which is present in the bulb number A or B1 is PA. So PA is the pressure of component A present in uh, present in this bulb. So this is some gas present in this bulb. So the pressure in the pressure of component A in this bulb will be PA. So Similarly, the pressure of component B in this bulb number 2 will be PB. So, suppose there is another component which is present in this bulb. So, the pressure of component B in this bulb is B, PB. So, the, similarly, we can, then we connect. First of all, we uh, took uh, two bulbs, B1, B2, uh, the volume of B1 of bulb number 1 and volume of bulb number 2 was same. B1 was equal to B2 is equal to V then we connect the two bulb by a narrow tube so this is a narrow tube narrow connecting tube then we uh, then we uh, close the two bulb with the help of a veil so this is a veil connecting the two bulb so this is a veil so first of all we took two bulbs B1 and B2 then we connect the both bulb with the help of narrow tube 
then we close then we close the system with the help of a well that no gas is transferring from this side to this side or from this side to this side so we close the system with the help of well then we remove then we remove the then we evacuate valve number 1 by using some uh, lithium pump so we evacuate this valve we remove first of all we remove some air from this bulb to evacuate this bulb then we uh, remove air from this bulb number 2 to, uh, to evacuate this bulb number 2 uh, air while this uh, well was closed so we close the wall well and we evacuate this bulb and this bulb after that after evacuation we fill this bulb with component a which is this component then we fill this bulb with component B after filling uh, the, the, we measure the pressure in this bulb number 1 which obtained to be P similarly obtained measuring by pressure measuring instrument and it come out also it come out to be P so after filling the uh, pressure of the bulb number 2 was P and similarly after filling this bulb the pressure come out to be P so after filling the two bulb then V open the well so when we open the well the component a was transferred from bulb number one to bulb number two similarly at the same time component b component b was also transferring from bulb number two to bulb number one so a steady state diffusion occur in the narrow tube and we assume that it is the equimolar counter diffusion so and this is the connecting tube. The area of this connecting, the uh, inside cross sectional area of this connecting tube is A. Similarly, the length of this connecting tube is L. So, the length of connecting tube is L and cross sectional area is A. Now, let V1 is the, we already discussed this is, let V1 is the volume of bulb number 1, V2 is the volume of bulb number 2, P A is the partial pressure of component A in bulb number 1. PA2 is the partial pressure of component A in bulb number 2, PB1 is the partial pressure of component B in bulb number 1, and PB2 is the partial pressure of component B in bulb number 2. So, so similarly, the A, the small a, shows us the inner cross sectional area, inner cross sectional area of the connecting tube. So, this was the connecting tube, this was the connecting tube, the inner, the connecting, this was the connecting tube. And the inner cross-sectional area like this, this cross-sectional area of the connecting tube is denoted by A. And the length of the connecting tube is denoted by L. This is the length of the connecting tube, which is L. So, the inner area of the connecting tube is denoted by A, while the length of the connecting tube is denoted by L. The molar flux of now, we use the fixed law of molecular diffusion. So, molecular flux of component A is Na. And it is denoted by fixed law that Na is equal to diffusivity of component A and the component B divided by RT and 2 for change in partial pressure of component A and this is the length of the connecting tube. So, we already discussed that fixed law, fixed law is equal to DAB DCA divided by DX. Here X is the length and uh, the, uh, we, uh, the cons we uh, convert the concentration to pressure. So, the concentration is converted to pressure by ideal gas law, which shows that Ca is equal to Pa divided by Rt. So, concentration is nothing but pressure divided by Rt. So, here we, con con we convert the concentration into pressure divided by Rt, and this is the length. The molar flux written for molar flux of B will be Mb. So, you don't use this, but here the molar flux of component B will be dBA diffusivity of component B in the component A. Uh, this is the RT, this is PB, and this is the length. So, molar rate or mole of air transport from bulb number 1 to bulb number 2 is denoted by A, which is the inner cross sectional area of the connecting tube. This is Na molar flux. So, molar flux, which is nothing Na, the unit of Na, if we, you see that Na is equal to mole per unit area per unit time. So, if we multiply this by area, it will give us mole per unit time, molar, molar flow rate or molar rate. So, A into Na is mole per unit time. Similarly, 
also this is a and we know that n is equal to dab dp a divided by l and 2 minus rt so in the previous case we uh, put minus sign so also put minus in this case in this case and the in place of n a in place of n a in place of this n a we put this term and multiply by a so multiply by a here similarly molar rate of b of component b is also denoted by so molar so the mole of b transport from bulk number 2 to bulk number 1 is denoted by nb so the molar the molar rate of component b which is transferring from bulk number 2 to bulk number 1 is denoted by a cross sectional area of the t and molar flux of component b which is equal to the diffusivity of component b in the component a divided by rt a change in partial pressure of component B over the length of the connecting tube and the cross-sectional area of the connecting tube. So this is A into RA into, uh, A into NA and this is the PA, the partial. So we simplify the above equation. The above equation, uh, so the above equation was NA DAB DCA divided by L into RT. The PA1 shows the partial pressure of component A in the bulb number 1 and the PA2 mean the partial pressure of component A in the bulb number 2. So the partial pressure of component A in the bulb number 1 is high as compared to partial pressure of component A in bulb number 2. So here there is a positive sign in this case. Similarly, A into NB is equal to DBA divided by RT into L into PA, PB2 minus PB1. This PB2 shows the partial pressure of component B in bulb number 2 and the partial pressure of component B in bulb number 1. So, this one. This is PA1, partial pressure of component A in bulb number 1 and this is the PA2, partial pressure of component A in bulb number 2. Similarly, PB, PB2, partial pressure of component B in bulk number 2 and partial pressure of component B in bulk number 1, PB1. So, we obtained this expression. Now, in term of concentration, we can write, we can convert concentration into partial pressure like in term of concentration, suppose this is change in concentration with the passage of time and now we know that concentration is nothing but it is mole mole for unit volume when we multiply it by volume and this is the time concentration divided by time so concentration is nothing but mole for unit volume and this is the time and when we multiply it by volume so this will cancel with this this is again the molar rate so the minus here minus v1 and 2 dca by dt is equal to minus v1 and we convert the concentration into pressure so pa divided by rt this is this is equal to my this is equal to a and to n a now this minus sign here occur because the partial pressure of component a in the compartment number one decreases with the passage of time therefore we took negative sign here because the partial pressure of component a in the bulb number one decreases with the passage of time but the partial pressure of component A in the bulb number 2 increases with the passage of time. So we put positive sign here. So again, we, this is the 2 volume of the car. compartment number 2. This is DCA2 with the passage of time. V2, uh, PA2 divided by RT. This is A into NA. So now this is the DPA. DP A divided by RT into DT, this is NA into divided by V1. So we can rewrite this equation, we can rearrange this equation, this equation. Simply this V1 come to the denominator here, V1. Similarly this V2 here come to the denominator and this expression V2 come here to this place. And this is DP A divided by RT, this is DP A divided by RT and this is the uh, sorry, there is one term. This is DPA and this is DT. Change in time. Here also change in time. So, 
the these two equation this two equation equation number 1 and equation number 2 combine equation 1 and equation number 2 we will get this type of equation this dpa divided by dt into rt is equal to a into na divided by e1 and this is minus dpa1 divided by change in time so this sorry this is change in time and here a n a a into n a divided by v1 divided by v1 and this r t come to this side multiply so r t here come this is d p a 2 divided by r t into d t a n a divided by v2 so d p a 2 divided by t t is equal to a n a into r t divided by v2 so uh, add this equation these two equation add these two equation these so when we add this equation with this equation we will get p change in partial pressure of component a in the bulb number 2 divided by dt change in the partial pressure of component a in the bulb number 1 with the passage of time is equal to 1 divided by v1 plus 1 divided by v2 and to na into the area the inner cross sectional area of the tube into universal gas constant into the temperature so we can further simplify this is the uh, change in uh, d by dt into p a 2 minus p a 1 is equal to 1 divided by v1 plus 1 divided by v2 into this into r t now the n a now we know that the molar flux is equal to diffusivity and to change in partial pressure divided by r t into length of the connecting tube put equation number 4 and equation number 3 now put equation 4 and equation number 3 n a in place of this n a we will put this term this whole term put this whole term in this place so this is p a 2 minus p a 1 divided by dt this is the volume term and this is the a inner cross sectional area of the connecting tube and this is d a b d p a divided by r t into l and this is the r t so r t cancel with r t and this is the d p a divided by l now this is again change p a 2 minus p a 1 divided by dt divided by dt this is v1 volume 1 plus 1 divided by v2 into a into dab dpa divided by l again the same term this is again this volume and a into dab divided by l now this can be this can be further simplified dpa is nothing but pa pa1 minus pa2 so dpa is nothing but pa1 minus pa2 so this is pa1 minus pa Two. So again, this is again this term. We can uh, simply write minus sign in place of this two, and this come to the first position. This come to the second position. So this term is equal to the volume, the uh, addition and two a and two d a b divided by l p a one minus p a two. Now. Uh, the again this term d by dt into p a 1 minus p a 2 partial pressure of component a in the bulb 1 minus partial pressure of component a in the bulb number 2 is equal to 1 divided by volume 1 plus 1 divided by volume 2 into inner cross sectional area diffusivity of a and b divided by length of the connecting tube partial pressure of component a in the bulb number 1 minus partial pressure of component a in the bulb number 2 so this term this term come to the denominator here below this position so this term come to the denominator here and this time dt come to this position so this time come to this position so we separate the variables so similarly we take the logarithmic because this is pa is a function and this is dp is the differential so in the denominator there is a function and in the numerator there is a differential so we will take the ln so minus ln P A1 minus P A2 and uh, take the limit from the initial condition to the final condition and this is the volume and DAB, DAB L divided by L and now took the uh, integral on time so initial time was 0 initial time and this is the final time so again simplify the equation the minus ln P A1 minus P A2 and limit uh, from initial to final is equal to 
वन डिवाइड बाई वी वन प्लस वन डिवाइड बाई यू टू एम टू ए एम टू डी ए बी डिवाइड बाई एल एम टू फाइनल टाइम सो फाइनल टाइम इज टी एफ सो अगेन फुट द लिमिट द लिमिट वैल्यू इन दिस इक्वेशन सो दिस इज द एल एन पी ए वन एट द फाइनल पोजिशन माइनस पी ए टू एट द फाइनल माइनस माइनस एल एन पी ए वन इनिशियल दिस इनिशियल कंडीशन माइनस पी ए टू इनिशियल एंड इन द दिस करिकट सो अगेन द पी ए टू initially that mean that the partial pressure of component a in the valve number 2 initially so initially there is no component a in the uh, vessel number 2 so initially there was no component a in valve number 2 so initially there was no component a in the vessel number 2 like this initially there was no initially there was pb only in this volume in this bulb number 2 there was only uh, component b there was no component a so p pa pa1 pa1 initially pa1 pa so initially there was only component b in the this and initially there was only component a in the this after certain time the a the b was transferred to this and the a was transferred to this after certain time but initially there was only and only component b in this and only and only component a was present in this bulk number 1 initially so so this is the initial so the component a the component a in the bulk number 2 initially was zero because there was there was only p a 2 the component a in bulk number 2 initially was zero because there was only an only component b present in bulk number 2 the initially the component a in the bulb number 1 was present yes initially there was total component a present in the bulb so initially there was only and only component a which was present in bulb number 1 so pa1 was the uh, was become equal to p so pa1 initially this was bulb number 1 this was bulb number 2 this was closed initially only and only component a was present and only and only component b was present in this volume so initially pa the total pressure was equal to pa plus pb the pb was not present in component 1 so pa was equal to total pressure and total pressure is nothing but p so v pa1 is equal to p similarly the component uh, the component a present in the compartment number 2 at the final so at the final there was a was transferred to this compartment and b was transferred to this compartment so uh, at final position the component a in the compartment number 2 was present so we uh, denoted it pa2 final similarly at the final position the pressure of component a uh, the pressure of component a uh, in the, uh, the the pressure of component a in the uh bulk number 1 finally that was equal to c a1 into f so finally there was some component a was also present in this because some was transferred but yet some little were present in this com compartment similarly initially b was present but after certain time there was some b also present in this compartment and some were transferred so this was p a1 f so and this is equal to the constant uh, this is the constant this is the constant this is the constant this is constant t f t f is the final time so uh, simplify this equation we get this is the pressure so this is nothing but this is this pressure this pressure p a 
as we have already discussed this one this pressure and this is the p a uh, 1 f minus p a uh, 2 f so this is the pressure this is the pressure and this is p a uh, 1 f minus p a uh, 2 f so p a uh, 1 f minus p a uh, 2 f p a uh, 1 f is p a uh, 1 f is this and p a uh, 2 f is this and this is the p a so this is the ln m2 2 divided p a uh, 1 f minus p a uh, 2 f is equal to this this constant equal to this plus this and 2 a and 2 d a b and l divided by a and 2 t f so this equation from this equation from this equation we can get the diffusivity of component a and two component b with the help of experiment if we know this total pressure if we know the pressure of component a at the final position if we know the pressure of component A, if we know the pressure of component A in the compartment number one at the final at the final time, similarly, if we know the pressure of component A in the compartment number two at the final time, so uh, if we know the final pressure of component A in the compartment number one and in the compartment number 2 and if we know the total pressure then we can determine the diffusivity of component A through the component B with the help of experiment so this was all about the uh, experimental determination of diffusion coefficient thank you very much for your attention if you are new to the channel please